Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And uh, here we are still doing the windows. Now as you can see here I am just adding this strip along the bottom because I've already put it along the top there, you just about to see it. If you can zoom in you'll be able to see it even more. There's a top edge going in just there and I'm just about doing the same along this bottom edge here using the same strip that I've used there just to create illusion that there's a frame and this white plastic strut here is the ledge so what I'm doing now is making sure that I am flush with the edge which is this edge here and making sure I end up cutting it in the middle of this um, two millimeter wide strip here so I'm just checking that we're good at that end so it's flush with the edge there so I'll just mark it here in the centre and then trim that off. So this is the easy bit. And all I've got to do is just glue that right along that edge. Now you probably notice that this window here is slightly different because I had to notch round the joiners on the main assembly when I uh, did the trusses originally. So what we're doing now is a little tiny drop of glue barely see it along each one of these strips so we've got something for right that'll do for now that'll get us started Pull that along so it's flushed with that edge. Let me just lie that in on top of the glue that's already there. All right. Then we just continue the rest of the way along. It hides the joints as well. And like I said earlier, just makes it look as if we have a frame on that edge as well. So, how many of you have been watching that new Hornby series on the Yesterday channel? I think it's brilliant. It's advertising our hobby. And Simon Cohen is doing a great job with Hornby at the moment. There he goes. That just does that. Just got to make sure there's no gaps stays down for quite a while this glue before it goes off just need to push that under there a little bit that's it I mean all this has got to be painted yet yep you heard right it's all got to be painted Right, so now that we've got the bottom of frame in, it's time to put the middle one in. Now the middle one is going to have to be measured to get the centre absolutely spot on. Uh, it's 46 from inside to inside, so I'm just uh, marking it at 23 in between 
of the two angle strips um, to make sure I get the center frame as it were or the center spar spot on um, otherwise if it goes on wonky it won't look so good I have now cut my strips which is ready to glue in situ so I'm just putting a little tiny dollop of glue on each one of these parts if I can get the glue small enough good stuff about it. good thing about this stuff it does not stain the glass super glue would do if I was doing this with super glue right, so we'll go up to about here and uh, try and keep it in the middle Here. Well, now we have the first section fully glazed. Um, I won't have to do any more with that. Um, that's as it is. Um, I've just got the um, rest of this side to do and the other side. So, I shall see you in a couple of weeks. Well, I must admit, I was exaggerating a little bit there, saying it would take a couple of weeks to do one side. And, in fact, it's taken me about ten hours to do one side. Now, as you can see, with the detail I've had added here, kind of adds uh, a different character of its own. And, remember the little gaps I had? in there so I've just filled that with a bit of plastic strip where uh, I'll paint it and uh, if it still shows through the paint I'll just paint it silver so it looks like louvers but uh, yeah so that's one side 302 pieces of plastic strip and I've had to order some more so I can continue and do this side. I have turned it round so we can start the other side. Um, something I haven't mentioned before is we have an unsightly gap here where the fascia meets the tiles. So what I, I'm intending to do there is to add some more plastic strip and that then covers the gap when I cut it off at that point there because at 
the northeastern, we don't like these unsightly gaps. And there it is gone. So what will happen is, uh, once all the glazing's finished, I'll just paint that the same colour as the fascia, and then just uh, darken it down, really weather it. So, another 301 pieces left to cut. Let's carry on regardless. I have decided to do something about these gaps underneath these large windows here where we've joined the three sections of roof together. Um, obviously I've had to notch around uh, with the card and I've cut a little bit too much away. So underneath all four window frames like this I've decided to use a little bit of plastic card um, which I have scribed just about make out some lines on there and I'm going to glue that to the underside of each one of those four joining windows and they can act like louvers so, so, so a little fella inside there, if, it, if the smoke builds up too much, you can just open the louvers and or let the smoke out or let fresh air in or whatever. That's, that's the theory behind that. And if I paint that silver and then get some black weathering paint so it gets right into the grooves and it looks like uh, they could open up, if you get what I mean. And uh, so that's what I've decided to do about these gaps underneath the windows and with a little bit of silver paint it highlights the score marks I made with the scalpel blade and uh, to me that's a pretty good cover up we're now taking a break from building the roof because I've run out of plastic strip. Uh, I've got some on order so once it turns up we'll be able to continue with the roof but in the meantime we can fit these dummy point motors. I got in touch with Gary from uh, Cheeky Tech because uh, he does a lot of 3D printing and I sent him some photographs and here it is. He's 3D printed some of these off for me. Um, now, these appeared at South Shields when the third rail was put in. Um, at the, yeah, the same time that the third rail was put in, because there was two signal boxes at South Shields. But uh, we'll go into that story at uh, another time. And that's how it goes. That little notch there goes over the sleeper there. And these two legs, as it were, go between the actual spigot of the point when it goes backwards and forwards. And if you notice, there's a little handle on the side. So if ever the point was frozen or whatever, they would take that off, drop it in, and then pull the pull the lever over by hand so that's that so what I'll do is I'll paint these up and uh, we shall see what they look like when they're in place and here's a better view on how they sit um, regarding where the point is So I've decided to paint them in this bluey grey colour. Um, I've used a Humbrol matte blue and then added some satin black to give it a little bit of a sheen. Um, the original photograph shows these jet black. So I'm painting them this colour and then I'm going to filthy them up 
um, before I put them back on the layout. Um, I'm going to add some other colours as well. I'm going to add a little bit of light grey to this uh, junction box on the side. And, um, and I might even add a little bit of white as well, especially for this rodding along here. And here's what the dummy punk point. No. And here's what the point motors look like in real life. Uh, I've decided to paint them slightly different, but I'm keeping that box grey. And that's the cantilever. If the point fails, I'll just pull that over and then flip the point if the uh, point is frozen. And another one that Gary is making is this one as well. The PTS-2s. As you can see, they're quite old point motors. There's one thing left to do with these now, and that's to give them a grimy look. They look too clean. So I'm using a matte 91 humbrel paint. And I'm just thinning it out over the whole dummy point, and then I'm just cleaning it up, just removing some of the paint, but not all of the paint, because I like to leave it grimy. Because I imagine these would get uh, pretty dirty after being on the line for 30 years. So I just uh, just adding the dirt and where it's on too thick just wipe it off yep yeah, that'll do nicely as for fitting the dummy point motors uh, in this area here I've had to cut away the third rail uh, in order to get these dummy point motors to fit because of the um, electrical control box on the side uh, was lifting up the third rail so I've had to cut them away only in three places because at uh, that end the boxes on the outside of the tracks. So the next thing to do is to glue these in situ and replace the ballast. Um, as for the third rail, I've just rounded the corners over with a file, uh, taken the sharp edges off and uh, I'll just repaint them edges up. I'm just be honest it hasn't really changed the look um, of the third rail that badly to be honest so yep yeah. a little bit of a tall order but I think it's uh, well worth it so to install install so to install the dummy point motors I've just put some watered down um, PVA glue around the point motor and sprinkled a little bit of mixed ballast um, in and around the point motor and then once that's dried out I will add some grey acrylic to um, darken this area down a bit so hopefully that should just dry out nicely now and then just hoover off the excess later 
Now, in this little gap here, there's no PVA glue in there at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to blacken that out with a little bit of uh, paint later on. So, that's one down, and uh, we shall see what the rest looks like later. Now that the ballast has dried around the point motor, I have decided to weather it using some uh, diluted acrylic paints, grey and black. Uh, the same mixtures I've used for the ballast in originally, so it blended in quite well, even where I have cut away the track. And it looks like they have been there all the time. So I'm quite happy with that. And in the post this morning, the plastic strip has arrived so I could continue with the roof. But that will be in next week's video. And as we're running up to Christmas, there will be a competition also in next week's video. But until then, stay safe everybody and enjoy your model railways. Take care. Bye bye for now. Bye.